Hello everyone. Today we're going to be learning how to use commas for clearer meaning in our writing. For this lesson you'll need a pen or a pencil and your exercise book or some paper. If you need to, pause the video now and go and get the things you need. Commas are a very important part of the writing process. Without them, our writing can become muddled and not make any sense. They are necessary to make the meaning of sentences clearer. Sometimes, using or moving a comma can change the meaning of a sentence completely. I'd like you to pause the video now and think of all the different ways which commas are needed in our writing. OK, so hopefully you have lots of ideas in your head about when you need to use commas in your writing. What I'd like you to do now is look at the sentences on your screen and work out why each sentence needs commas in the places I have used them. If you could jot down in your books the reason why and then play the video when you finish to see if you were right. Off you go. OK, how do you think you did? Let's go through the reasons for each sentence and see if you were right. Sentence number one, commas are needed to separate the items in a list. Without the commas, the reader could easily get muddled about how many items Max bought from the shop. For example, one of the items in this list is sausage rolls. If you missed out the commas or put them in the wrong place, your reader could think that Max bought sausages and rolls as two separate items. Sentence number two uses commas to indicate extra information in a sentence either as parenthesis or a relative clause. As you know from our previous learning, if I take out the extra information and pair of commas in this case, I am left with a main clause that makes sense on its own. Without the commas, it's hard to read the sentence clearly. Sentence number three uses a comma at the end of direct speech, but before the inverted commas. Remember that this could be replaced with a question mark, exclamation mark or full stop, so it's not always a comma. Sentence four is a complex sentence where the subordinating conjunction is at the start of a sentence. Therefore, we need to use a comma to separate the main and subordinate clauses. Remember, you can have a complex sentence where the subordinating conjunction is at the middle point of the sentence and then you don't need a comma. Sentence number five uses a comma after a fronted adverbial, and you always need a comma there. It helps to explain where, when, or how something happened in a clear way. How did you get on? Were you able to find out why commas were needed in each of those sentences? Hopefully now you can see how important commas are to make your writing clear. Okay, now we have discussed the different uses of commas within a sentence. I'd like you to copy and complete the sentences on your screen, putting in the comma or commas in the correct space in the sentence. Pause the video, restart when you have finished. OK, how did you all get on with that? Let's mark it together now. Remember to tick the ones you got right and correct any marvellous mistakes. So, sentence one is a complex sentence and it starts with a subordinating conjunction, as... Therefore, I need a comma to separate the subordinate clause from the main clause. In this sentence, the main clause is, the bear hid in the bushes. As the campus sat around the fire eating, adds extra information, but it doesn't make sense on its own, so I need to put a comma between those two clauses. Sentence number two needs commas to separate the items in a list. Therefore, I need a comma between the items that Lucy packed after hairbrush and after pyjamas. Remember, I don't need a comma before and. Sentence number three uses a fronted adverbial every Friday. So I need a comma to separate this from the main clause. Sentence four has a relative clause in it. So I need to use a pair of commas around that extra information, who was only six weeks old. If I take that out, I'm left with a main clause that makes sense on its own. And sentence number four also has a relative clause, and we learnt previously that a relative pronoun which has to have a comma before it. So the sentence five should read, Bristol is a city, comma, which is located in the southwest. How did you get on with that? I did try and do a challenging one for question five. If you are writing a list, commas are essential in order to be clear about the items in your list. 
Without commas in the right place, it can be difficult to tell the different items apart. Have a look at the sentences on your screen. They both say, at the picnic we ate, and then a list of food items. The commas that you use here are essential to know how many and which food items there were. What I'd like you to do in a second is pause the video and add two commas to the first sentence so that there are four different types of food in the list. And in the second sentence, add a comma or commas to show the picnic contains three foods. When you're ready, pause the video and off you go. How did you get on with that? Hopefully this activity has shown you how important it is the commas are in the right place to read the list accurately. So before we mark it, remember to always read the question carefully. In these questions, sometimes it tells you how many commas to use and it clearly tells you how many foods your picnic needs to contain. So if you read the question, getting the answer should be easy. In this example, we have fruit cakes and that could be distinguished as two items, fruit and cakes separately, or it could be one item, fruit cakes. The comma is really important. So in sentence number one, I wanted to have four foods. So to have four foods, I have fruit, cakes, small muffins and chocolate biscuits. Therefore, my comma needs to be after fruit and after cakes. In sentence number two, I wanted there to be three foods at my picnic. This is when fruit and cakes needs to come together and be one item, fruit cakes. So this time I use my comma after cakes. At the picnic we ate fruit cakes, small muffins and chocolate biscuits. As we said earlier, sometimes using or moving a comma can change the meaning of a sentence completely. I'd like you to look at the sentence that I've used on your screen now. It is about some people going to a cinema. Depending on where you place a comma will completely change your sentence. What I'd like you to do for sentence one, I'd like you to copy the sentence into your book and insert a comma to make it clear that only Sally and Bob went to the cinema. Then I'd like you to write the same sentence for number two, but this time I'd like you to put commas in the sentence to show that all three children went to the cinema. A very slight difference, but a very important difference. OK, when you're ready, pause the video, copy and complete the sentences. OK, this example really shows you how important commas are to make your meaning clear. In sentence one, your comma must go after John. This shows that just Sally and Bob went to the cinema. After they left John, Sally and Bob went to the cinema. You can hear my pause where the comma is. In sentence two, you need two commas. After they left, comma, John, comma, Sally and Bob went to the cinema. This time I have a list of people, so it's very clear that three people went to the cinema. Another way of showing how important commas are to make meaning clear is shown in the pictures on your screen. Could you take a minute to look at the pictures and explain how the comma changes the meaning? Pause the video and jot it down in your books now. Unpause the video when you've had enough time. So you can see that in the first picture, the comma helps to explain that the lady is asking the man to lower the picture on the wall. Whereas if you take the comma out, it sounds as though the word please needs lowering. Can you see how just one small comma makes such a difference to meaning? So, just like you saw in the example before, have a look at this example. Can you explain how the comma changes the meaning? You could either explain this in your books or you could draw a picture to show how the meaning is changed despite or because of the comma. Pause the video and restart it when you've finished. So, for the first one, it sounds like a slow zebra is crossing the road. Whereas where the comma is, it's helping you to read it in a clearer way, saying slow zebra crossing coming up. 
Can you see the difference there? OK, so now I'd like you to copy the sentences into your book and complete them to show each sentence has two different meanings. This means that some might need commas, but some might not. A top tip for you, it might help to read the sentence out loud, pausing where you think a comma might go to help the meaning get clearer. OK, pause the video, copy and complete the sentences and off you go. OK, let's go through the sentences together, thinking about how we can change the meaning. For the first sentence, if I put a comma after the word yellow, my sentence reads, When the lightning turned incredibly bright yellow, people began to get scared. Whereas, if I change that comma and put it after bright, it says, When the lightning turned incredibly bright, yellow people began to get scared. Hmm... Do I think that that sentence meant to be talking about the lightning turning in bright yellow or there being yellow people who got scared? Sentence number two. If I put a comma after the word shoot, I, I have the sentence, hurry up and shoot, grandad. I have that slight pause, which means I'm saying to grandad that he needs to hurry up and shoot. Whereas if I don't put a comma in that sentence, it sounds like I'm shooting grandad. Sentence number three. The comma's really important here. I need a comma after working, because when she's not working is a subordinate clause. If I just put a comma there, this is my sentence. When she's not working, she loves eating her dog and her family. Do you think that that sentence was meant to be that this person likes to eat their dog and eat their family? I'm not sure. So, if I put a comma after the word eating, I have a list of different things. When she's not working, she loves eating, her dog and her family. I think that's probably the meaning that I was meant to have. Well done everyone, I think you've worked really hard today. There's a lot to think about when we're talking about commas for meaning. So, let's end our learning by seeing how confident you feel with using commas to make your meaning clear. What I'd like you to do is copy the sentences into your book and decide whether you need to add any commas into each of your sentences. You might need one, you might need two, or you might not need any. You have to work out how your meaning can be made clearer. OK, when you're ready, pause the video and off you go. How did you get on with the hinge question? Could you identify where you needed a comma or commas to make your sentence clearer? Let's mark this last part together. Remember to tick if you're correct or correct any marvellous mistakes. So sentence one uses a relative clause. So we need to add a pair of commas around our relative clause. So it should read David, comma, who was 10, comma, supported Liverpool Football Club. Sentence two needs commas for a list. So I've added a comma after game. Henry received a board game, comma, book and some chocolate for his birthday. Sentence number three does not need a comma to clarify the meaning. It's a compound sentence with the coordinating conjunction so and this doesn't call for a comma. So that can stay exactly the same. Without a comma, sentence four says all the time machines were getting more intelligent and powerful. However, if you put a comma after the fronted adverbial all the time, it changes the meaning to all the time, comma, machines were getting more intelligent and powerful. I have a feeling that sentence was meant to be about machines and not time machines. Sentence five is a complex sentence, but it doesn't need a comma as it doesn't start with a subordinating conjunction. If, however, we change the clauses around, and we started with the subordinate clause, when his owner gave him a treat, we would then need a comma there to separate. But as it stands, it's fine as it is. And sentence five most definitely needs a comma after the word painting. If I don't put a comma there, it sounds like Mary's painting her dog. So the sentence reads, Mary's hobbies included painting, comma, her dog and walking. Do you think you've mastered using commas for clearer meaning? I hope I see them in your learning soon.